about to watch the second part of episode 5 on the history of central heating, all about boilers. If this is the first video you're watching, you start at the wrong place, you need to go back to video 1 and start there. But if this is the fifth video, part 2 you're watching, you're going to look for punishment. But anyway, here's the video. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. Now we're close to the end of this epic video on the history of central heating. The last thing I want to look at is the evolution of the burners and the heat exchangers. I promise, I promise this is the last bit. I promise. So, this is what we're starting off with. This is what the burner was in the uh, back boiler or the floor standing boiler. So this is what we call an atmospheric burner. That means the gas would be burned upwards and would be under atmospheric conditions. So this hole you see here, this is where the pre-air would come in for combustion. This little gap you see here is where the injector would be from the gas valve and would inject the gas into oh, my nail look, my nail. and would inject the gas into here would mix with the air here and would burn the burner across there so depending on whatever the burner pressure you put in there would be how high the flames were and how much kilowatts that would be burning so this would be just under atmospheric conditions. So very, very simple. There could be a bank of two or three or even four of these, depending on how big the boiler was. Okay, so this is kind of the, the, the first part, the first boilers we were looking at. This is the burner, what you're going to be finding there. Ideal Boilers, a long established Yorkshire based company was bought by French company Group Atlantic in 2015. Ideal Boilers are the third largest boiler manufacturer in the UK. The next evolution on the burner for us is the uh, combi boiler, what we had, the um, non-condensing combi boiler. Um, so again, this is an atmospheric burner. Again, you can see, if I hold this up closer, you can see this here is where the air and the gas mix. So you can just see the holes there and you can just see the injectors. So again, the gas would be coming in under the pressure from the, um, the gas valve. It would then mix with the air and it would then burn across evenly across there. These things you can see here, this is the spark generator and this is flame rectification. So this would ignite the gas and this would then tell the PCB that it's all lit across and would keep it running. Okay. So that's the, the next, that was the next generation of the, of the burner. The youngest by the manufacturer in the UK is Raveny, who was founded in 1987. Now then, we kind of left atmospheric burners now and gone to what's called premix burners. So that means we use the speed of the fan to push the gas in. So the faster the fan goes, the more gas we've got burning. So we started off then with this downward burner to make it more efficient. Okay, so the fan is sat on top of the burner and is pushing the gas and air in. So this is where the, the gas would come in here. And again, this is where the air would mix here. So again, pre-air and gas coming in, speed of the fan, then forcing the gas to burn downwards. It would then go through the heat exchanger and then out through the flue. We'll, we'll have a look at the heat exchangers soon. So this is your, your, downward, your downward burner. Ariston Boilers was founded in 1960 in Italy, where they produced electric water heaters. Then, the next one we're going to is the 360. So this is what was on the uh, heat only boiler, the uh, condensing combi and the system boiler. So the gas would burn 360 degrees around this cup burner, this is called a cup burner. So the way the gas gets in there, this is the gas valve, the gas comes in through here, 
the air mixes with the gas there. It then goes through the blending tube and mixes the gas and air together and then burns 360. This time we've only got one igniter flame rectification flame conductant so this does the same job as the two probes on the on the last one we looked at. Again. So that's a quick look at um, the way burners have gone from this one to this one. Okay, it's such a short space of time as well. It's not that long since you know since they've come in in two thousand and five. I was still fitting boilers like this, and then we. we Went away from that, went to condensing boilers because the pile of the building rigs and all the other stuff what came in for the energy trust and everything to get down the emissions of the, the CO2 so we could reduce the carbon footprint. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at a quick look at the evolution of the heat exchangers. Cast iron has long been a choice material for manufacturers of boilers. Dating back to the late 19th century where the first coal-fired gas iron boilers were produced in the UK. Cast iron is also chosen for its tolerance to sulfurous flue gases, a byproduct released as a result of burning coal which has a high sulfur content. In 1956, when the Clean Air Act was introduced, we saw the move from solid fuel to town's gas and the oils, and with the arrival of steel as a variable material for boiler heat exchangers. Once natural gas became readily available, this opened the door for all types of materials and more refined manufacturing processes. Today, we see boilers manufactured in a range of materials from stainless steel, steel and aluminium, copper, and of course, cast iron. Here we go. This is a copper heat exchanger. So you can see, this is where the water would flow in go around the coils, around the heat exchanger, picking the heat up and come back out. So you can see this copper heat exchanger here on this glowworm boiler in position above the burner. So you can see the burner, atmospheric burner and the combustion chamber. You can now see there is a gap here to allow the heat from there to be transferred through. And this is the hub then which takes the products of combustion away through the fan and then out through the flue. So these copper heat exchangers are amazing. They're very good at taking the heat out of the product of combustion and transferring it into the water very, very efficiently. The only problem is we can't use these in new boilers because copper isn't resistant to condensate. So the byproduct of burning natural gas is uh, carbon dioxide and water vapour. So the products of combustion exit in a non-condensing boiler would be about 150 degrees C, where the products exit in a condensing boiler would be around about 50 degrees. So a lot of the heat has been taken out of the flue. So what happens is the water vapour turns back into a liquid. This liquid is now acidic. It's about the acidity of tomato juice. So if this uh, acidic water was to drip onto this heat exchanger, it would start to corrode it. So this is why we're using things like stainless steel now, rather than copper. Aluminium again isn't very good, but we add silica in with it to help it. It still doesn't work very well. So why don't we have a look at these um, aluminium heat exchangers? In 1991, Ideal launched its classic combi boiler range, and by 2005, it had sold a million units. Now, this heat exchanger is an aluminium heat exchanger. It's got silica uh, in with the aluminium, which is not very good. They corrode quite easily. So you can see on this side here, we've got the spark igniter. So this would be where it would light the gas. And this is your flame rectification, flame conductance. This would tell the, the PCB that the, the gas is burnt across. So you can see this is in quite a poor condition. Okay, it's been taken out because it's corroded and was leaking. So not a very robust 
um, heat exchanger at all. In 1992, Worcester Heat Systems joined the Bosch Group to become Worcester Bosch Boilers. So completely made of aluminium. This is the sump on the bottom there. So this is where the condensate would drop through because this is a condensing boiler. So burner would sit on the top here, fan on the bit higher up would burn down um, and then the condensate then. So this is the flue where the flue would come off and then go up to the, up to the top. So the fan would be pushing the products of combustion down, condensate would stay in the bottom, it would then come across the side here and then out through the top of the boiler. So that's your aluminium heat exchanger. Still using them, still rubbish. Tomcat Gas Training was founded in 2010 by me, Derek Robbins, but didn't become an ACS gas centre until 2013 when Catherine Brittner, my daughter, the cat of Tomcat, joined the company. Next one we're going to look at now is this stainless steel one. So this is the one, the Giovanni, Giovanni, however you want to say it heat exchanger. You can see this is coils of 10 milli stainless steel pipe all going around. There's actually two coils in there for the flow and return and the heat would be burning 360 degrees going down there, going through the bottom and it comes out of the back, products of combustion up and then out through the top. This would be plastic because all the heat would be taken out through the big surface area of the heat exchanger. So this down at the bottom here, this is your condensate trap. This is where you can view the condensate coming through. So the products of combustion would be going down there, out through the back and then out through the top and out through the, you could see the fan at the top. So more robust uh, heat exchanger. The only problem is the aluminium you can take more heat out of it than you can from the stainless steel. So a lot of manufacturers are going to, back to aluminium, um, but they're using cast aluminium rather than the silica being in. So hopefully they'll last a bit longer, but the plastics, the aluminium down burners, I don't rate them at all. Whereas the stainless steel, even though they are a little bit less efficient, are a lot more robust than, than the aluminium. Let's now take a look at the Worcester Junior heat exchangers. The heat exchanger we're looking at now is another aluminium heat exchanger. It might look like it's made of stainless steel, but it's actually aluminium on the inside. If we take a close look at the instructions in the bottom, you can see there's a set of baffles inside there. So there's some baffles to remove from the top. So. This is the fan sucking the gas in and the air, okay, which goes into the blending tube at the top. And again, this burner is a downward burner. Okay, so this is burning down that way. Down to the bottom, there's a sump. And then this is where the products of combustion then go up and then out through the flue. So this is a Worcester boiler. This is one of the junior boilers. Uh, they do two different types of, of burners and this is their uh, most popular one. Let's have a look at our last heat exchanger, the heat exchanger what's in the ideal logic range. Now the boiler we're looking at now is an ideal boiler and again this is an aluminium heat exchanger. So if we take a, a closer look again so you can see the fan here. And this time the fan is connected to the burner here and the burner is burning downwards. This is the uh, heat exchanger, again aluminium, you can see the aluminium there. And then you can see the sump coming off the bottom there. And then this is the flue off and out. So the products combustion will be going through here. So you can see this is made of plastic. The reason why they get away with this being made of plastic is because all the heat's taken out in the heat exchanger into the water so it's again low temperature this boiler does suffer with quite a few problems here um, because i don't think this plastic actually does take the heat so again gas valve bringing the gas into the burner this is where the air mixes so your gas and air comes in there you can just see the injector sticking through there then goes up through the fan and then the fan then pushes it through the burner and then down 
into the sump and then out and the condensate's collected in this condensate trap there and then goes off okay so that's another um, aluminium heat exchanger and burner so it's finally happened yep it's the end i hope you've enjoyed this epic marathon journey through the history of central heating i'm so glad you've come along for the ride so you guys who are watching this from tomcat in the classes sorry guys for those of you who are watching this on youtube what's your excuse you could have turned off at any time but anyway thanks for watching so if you want to see more of these videos why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel? If you've liked these videos, why don't you give us a thumbs up? Or leave us a constructive comment down at the bottom. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll get the notification when the new videos are coming through. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Cheers.